definitely are going to be into Champion Select. As Jat said before, uh, due to entering in paperwork late, TDK will be losing all of their bans. Yep. So, obviously there, we have to wait out the ban timer each side on there. Team Liquid has already banned Kogma, by the way. That should show up on your screen shortly. Uh, TDK is obviously mm -hmm. just waiting on this next one. Looks like there might be a slight error getting that ban up on the screen, but it is Kogma yep. early on. Don't want any mid laners being down 100 CS and still doing a bunch of damage to team <laughs> fights this time, as Incarnation did in our first game of the day. So Liquid now, what do you choose? You always hear sometimes that teams will go into scrims and not ban something to kind of make it more of a more difficult if the other team can get the picks they want. Yeah. You get a little more training out of it. This is one of those situations now. Team Liquid only has a choice of three. What do they want? So Kogma and Nidalee have been banned by Team Liquid. On the left side, they, that is loss of bans by TDK. Yeah, so they have to let the timer run all the way down. That's right. Before Team Liquid gets their next ban. Yeah, this will make it interesting because TDK still has the ability to pick as many OP champions as they want. And mm -hmm. loss of bans is an interesting dynamic because teams, it generally hurts them since they don't get to be the target bans, but it allows many more powerful champions to sneak through. Uh, now Team Liquid needs to approach this in, a, in kind of a strange way where they know a lot of the OPs are going to get through, so they only want right. to ban away the stuff that could target TDK. And being red side in this situation can actually be good because if there's a lot of really good, they just call them blinds uh, in competitive, where champions that are good regardless of what you pick against them, you want to get as many blinds on your team as possible, the OP ones. Uh, I wonder if Dominate, with all the junglers being up right here, just going to blind progress. Looks like it will be his instantly to it. Piglet with the Callista as well, instantly locked in. Every team knows what they want after these three bans, Kog'Maw, Nidalee, and Evelyn. As we start the picks now, Kez and Bishu kind of waiting here. As you were saying, Jat, Seraph and Kez still pretty much towards the top and the core of this team, the guys that helped them get here. Hopefully they can kind of rein in the troops of Bisho, Latman, and Baby here as we get it. It will be interesting. Yeah. They're taking their time on picks. There's actually quite a few options. Maybe that's why as well. You can pick anything. <laughs> There's only been three bands. Everything's available now. Especially with the Evelyn Nidalee Kog'Maw picks. Of course, they go with relatively conservative things. Rek'Sai to complement or to just go against the Gragas. Mm -hmm. Ash, that was banned last game. Yeah, but they already have Galista, so. Oh, it makes me so sad. I always forget when you're locking the 80 carry first, it just slips your mind when you look yeah. past it. Cassio could definitely be a real thing here. We'll see what they decide to go. B shoes, Corky as well. It could be Latmans. That could be a swap for those two, though. Cassiopeia saw a significant number of bans in the European LCS. Yeah, she did. Phoenix has been playing a lot of Cassiopeia as well. Just get a little bit ahead on that champion and you can start dominating people in lane. Not to mention the actual damage per second that Cassio can put out in team fights is ridiculous. I like to think of Cassiopeia kind of like a, an AP 80 carry, uh, only because of the, the, the damage pattern in team fights where you land something and then you kind of machine gun out your twin right. fang again and again. Very much like an AD carry would shoot autos at you. Cassio just does more damage. It hurts. It hurts a lot. And this composition is already showing one heck of a lot of power from Team Liquid. So much damage. Andy, Cass, Gragas, and Callista. What could they round that composition out with? Probably a big old tank in the top lane. We'll have to see what they go with for Quas. They said he was the rock that they like to get behind. And it may be this time if that's not his cast. Azir Ooh. and Rumble on the other side. We'll see what Bichu yeah. can do on this Azir. Over-indexing on magic damage for sure here. <laughs> Azir Rumble, two huge damage oh, that's threats. that's so true. They have Corky. Oh, and man. Corky, who does about half magic damage. Their only physical damage comes from Rek'Sai in the jungle. So TDK uh, also doesn't have too much lockdown. Th this team composition looks very much like everyone on TDK just has a champion they want to play. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully they can get really far ahead because as far as team fight coordination and positioning, there's not a tremendous amount of synergies there. You generally want more lockdown for your high damage champions. But if they get far ahead, it'll obviously still work. So Maokai would be a really easy pick here. Nar as well, but then you kind of got to fight around the bar. And that may be what they said to go with here. 
A few more seconds for Team Liquid to finally lock in their comp. It is going to be the Gnar. Finally a tank well. in this composition of damage for Team Liquid here. We'll have to see how they play it out. The lane swap comes in as well. I'm sure it would be tough for these guys to play against it, having probably not done it too much coming out of the Challenger series. Yeah. Like here and there, obviously, but not at this level. Nar is something I expect to see a lot of from Quas this split. Quas always been so good in the laning phase, also good at fairly mechanically complex champions, mm -hmm. but Nar combines those things as well as still bringing you a tank in oh, the yeah. teamfight phase. So it's really, it's the perfect top lane champion for the really good top laners in pro play. So how would you, as a player, just kind of take a team with three subs? You play yours and not go crazy? Yeah. Just nothing crazy? Basically, well, the way TDK is doing it right now is just like, what champion do you want to play? Yeah. What will you be most comfortable with on the stage? And what do you have the biggest chance of actually beating the other laner with? Because that's the way TDK is going to win, is if they steamroll all the lanes. TDK is not going to win with great team fight coordination and rotations. They have to be right. able to mechanically win their lanes. So just pick whatever's comfortable. TDK, TDK coach Sean and Peter shaking hands as they make their way to the back to now watch what the teams can produce with the compositions they have now set forth. Let us know who you think is going to have the edge in this game. We are in the second one of the summer split. Tweet hashtag TDK win or hashtag TL win to at LOL Esports. And we will obviously be tallying those up all throughout the game. And get your votes right on the screen at the most pivotal moment, that one fight, <laughs> so you can have a say in it. Keep cheering for the players here in the crowd as well as tweeting at home as we get into our second match of the day. TDK, we get to see them now on the rift here in the LCS versus Team Liquid. It's going to be one heck of a matchup. Rumble again in the top lane, so we're going to get some explosive objective fights, but got to count as well in Azir in there, and they're going to get even more dangerous once you start balling up. Looking on the other side, Dominate's going to be looking to separate all those fights. Yeah. And just get a lot of kills cleaned up here by Piglet and Phoenix. It's going to be interesting. Always very critical to zero out the Azir and late game team fights. Mm -hmm. uh, just because the... It's one of the main reasons, actually, if we just kind of go back in time and figure out why Azir and Cassiopeia are two of the most dominant mid laners nowadays, a lot of it does end up having to do uh, with Cinder Hulk, which improved the need for these types of incredibly high damage mid lane champions. Right. You have more tanks on the field, which generally means you have more control in the team fights, which allows you to have these incredibly high damage mid laners who can excel with AoE damage. And if you think of the mid laners that do the most damage per second, well, they're kind of Cassiopeia and Azir outside of also having relatively strong laning phases. Mm -hmm. Cassiopeia we talked about in champion select with the Twin Fang being very AD carry-like getting your AP ratios and base damages out very frequently. And Azir is the same way with the Sand Soldiers because that's basically an extension of his auto attack, but right. based on an AP ratio and also AOE. So anytime you have a longer sustained team fight, which is what you get with more tanks in the game, these types of champions are mm -hmm. excelling in those team fights, and that's why we see them here. Interesting to see TDK not really go for too much of a tank here. Could have kind of maybe gone a Nunu in the jungle or something, get that blood boil on his ear. But they choose to go with a little bit more damage themselves. We saw that it was uh, heavy on the AP side, so we'll keep an eye on how Team Liquid mitigates and starts to defend as they get up into these levels. It's like more damage focus here with his noxious blasts onto Bishu more than he's trying to farm out these waves. Making it hard for Bishu, has to use the soldiers to get his farm here. Good start there to the mid lane, and we will get a matchup for both of these, so good fights for the duos. More jungler intervention to mid and top. Should be a pretty action-packed game. Yeah, I'm watching Piglet. Occasionally I'll spectate his solo queue games mm -hmm. uh, just to watch his actual laning phase, and it's pretty remarkable how efficient he is with CS and Harass. It's going to be really hard for Latman and Baby to match up against Piglet and X Special. Uh, just based off of Piglet's mechanics and X-Special's experience as well. Uh, already they hit level 2 first and they're able to deny CS while continuing some harass. This is really like a, uh, and no discredit to them, just the leagues and the style, the caliber, but like a JV and a varsity lane. It's going to be <laughs> very difficult for TDK to pull out of this lane ahead. Absolutely. Just already 10-6 to and they're going to try to keep them back. Just quickly dodging out of too much damage. Kez? Likes to play it early. We used to see him on a lot of Elise and Evelyn trying to be in his opponent's face and already trying to do a bit of that. At least getting an eye on Dominate for now. But both junglers have an eye on each other. Yeah, sometimes a common move for Rek'Sai junglers to start red side and then immediately go for a ganker and invade in the bottom side. 
but Kez a little bit late there, uh, making it all the way down to the bottom. Still just with his red buff, though, he knows his bottom lane's gonna need some help, and he's hoping the team liquid get a little bit over aggressive, which Piglet <laughs> hopping right in. The, the, oh no! The melee Callista goes right in, baby going down, he could stay alive, put on a diaper, got it! He stays alive. Special's gonna stay alive with this one as well as he just makes a few more steps out, but I don't think melee Callista is yet to be a thing. <laughs> wow, so an incredibly unexpected gank by TDK there, but Props for them for pulling it off, because basically what happened there is Kez was spotted invading the blue buff, and he was shown with only the red buff. So typically, if you're I Will Dominate or the rest of Team Liquid, you say, okay, his invade failed. Yeah. Team Liquid had the river warded. That's his fastest path to bottom lane. What they expect Kez to do is to salvage his experience and go farm. But instead, he loops all the way around through the river into the lane brush, wasting about 30 seconds for that setup, and arrives at just the moment the Piglet decides to go aggressive. It gets the kill. You can see Team Liquid easily would have had a 2v2 kill. At that point, they yeah. were thinking, these guys are just bad. We're going to be able to 2v2 kill them. But actually, it was a bait. They get <laughs> baited, burn almost all their summoner spells. Piglet goes down. Right through the trap play, door. Baby. So there's Kez's aggression to start things off. We'll see how Team Liquid decides to answer. They usually haven't had too much trouble of that in the past. They have something in mind still that they want to do, not a team to fall behind. TDK, they do have to keep the pressure on, though. I feel like if they give Team Liquid that window, they won't be able to get it back here, especially with the sub squad. Yeah. Working slowly now off of this. Kez back to his jungle, not going crazy, keeping things calm. So Just got to keep track of Kez and those Rek'Sai yeah. ganks. Dominate already to the bottom lane, though. Not a lot of wards here for TDK. They are going to get completely routed on this one. And actually, Baby had his flash from the previous play. I don't think they counted on that. Yeah, in all the chaos right there, and him ticking down so low in health, you would have almost expected him to have Yeah, absolutely. Away. Interesting. But all instead... Right. So at least they get that. Maybe it's a rinse and repeat, and they come back. There's a lot of summoners down. Looks like Latman's a flash up, and Piglet is a heal up only. So there could be some action here in the bottom lane. Already started. We saw that first blood. That did go over to Kez, actually, the assist to that bottom lane. So we'll see if Kez continues to use it. He's already got himself being nosy inside Dominate's jungle here, putting down some wards. Yeah, very nice. Deep pink ward as well. I wonder if Dominate will check it. Oh, negative, sir. Yeah, it doesn't look like and they can ping him going through. Those are those cheeky wards you can get in as a jungler. Hello. Badoop. Oh, they... Ah. <laughs> I was, okay, so I was thinking right there that Dominate, if he wasn't so suspicious of where Kez would okay. be, it would have been a great gank there waiting for Dominate to engage in on the Krug. So credit to Dominate there for warding, but at the same time, <laughs> uh, Dominate does need to go looking for pink wards because his jungle is littered. Specials just feel like he wants to like dive out and kill somebody right now. But he's just throwing auto attacks. As you said, Dominate is just pretty much walking around his security system right now. So TDK can be aggressive in the lane. They can be safe in the lane and kind of try to play it like their junglers there. They do everything they want and have some mind games right now. This is good for them. Hopefully they can use it. Well, that super early scrying orb as well. Mm -hmm. Pink Ward put up in that brush by Team Liquid to make sure they don't get any more cheeky ganks. 71%. Oh, what a nice Emperor's Divide! One last hit! Bishu says thank you very much. That's how you do it right Ooh. there. Phoenix burns both summoners for that as well. He mm -hmm. was disrespecting Bishu something fierce right there. Up in CS, thinking he can go and get the kill. Bishu just completely outplays him, dashing in and getting the knockback. Exactly how you do it. Still having the soldier there once Phoenix went back around the sand soldiers as well what a better way to have it yeah. happen then i mean your jungler being there as well but a kill to the bottom with assist the kill to how's, the mid lane now so how's this for a, a mid lane substitute tdk have alex each now bishu all these mid lane substitutes always working out just in range for the knock up knocks him back right away phoenix misses his petrifying gaze entirely bishu was well out of range well, and he just a soldier just to be safe bishu had turned backwards <laughs> as well when the petrifying gaze yeah. went off just to make sure he wouldn't be stunned phoenix smart, smart play in the mind of phoenix that's one of those plays you could say 
Phoenix thought he had the upper hand, and Bishu knew all along. 55 to 65 there, so a good pickup there for Bishu to kind of clear up some of that CS deficit. A little bit of a ward volleyball going on here between Kez and Dominate. Oh, hello! Phoenix just gets back to lane, knowing both summoners were down. They put him again in the coffin. Kez can find himself dead here. Here's Quash on the top lane with a teleport. He takes it. He's actually about to gnar out as well. I don't think he's going to be able to hop over the wall in time to get to the rest of the team, but a very nice reaction by Team Liquid to not lose everything on this. Actually, Jat still going in. Oh. Quash with that gnar bar halfway down. Sarah finds himself in a bad spot. Both of them should just walk straight up right now and take the high road. And it looks like they may actually be caught out continuously. Quas could get a double kill in this situation. Here comes Kez. He's going to try to get to the top side with his call, and it does not happen. That's a triple kill coming in for Quas all together from one teleport. Quas means business right there. This was He's that rock. starting to get a little bit scary for Team Liquid. They got solo killed by the sub mid laner. They got an early gank fall against them in the bottom lane. But the teleport in from Quas managing his rage going in and out mini to mega to mini again. Yeah. And the three kills. That's this is gonna be Nar's game if Quas wants to try and rescue Team Liquid here. Uh, that makes him so big. He already had that hex tech to go into the fight with, which not allowing Seraph to push him out of lane, and now he's just gonna come back even bigger. More well, magic resistance. Yeah, the big thing here is as well, TDK. Very heavily magic uh, team composition. Not even a warrior Rek'Sai for more physical damage. Cinder Hulk instead. So really, really limited amounts of physical damage, meaning the Quas with a Hex Drinker and a Spectre's Cow already is going to be near impossible to tank down. What he's doing? Oh. Yeah, looking at this one, I mean, it was a good gank there to kill Phoenix again, but when Dominate was able to knock everyone back into the turret, it really just turned the tides. And at this point, it was just about Team Liquid making sure they didn't take too much Azir damage, and Quas just getting his damage out. The fact that he could catch Seraph against the wall uh, to get him low enough was very critical, so the Flame Spitter couldn't just spam and stay on him. But remember, the Hex Drinker on Quas did allow him to tank a lot of that damage, despite the Rek side coming back into the fight after the death. It was just a little bit too late. Whew. Quas long fight. Quite big there. Yeah, very long fight indeed. We'll see all of that work. The three kills across the board for TDK quickly picked up in a matter of seconds by Quas. Only in one lane, though. We do see that TDKs are spread out across the map. So if Quas isn't here for the fights, it's not really going to matter that they got those kills. Cleaning up in the mid lane, 94 to 71. Bishu may mechanically outplay Phoenix, but he does not in the laning phase, it seems. Yeah, he gets the solo kills. He gets the solo kills. CS. CS to aggro, though. Still going to Not so much. It's all right. CS can definitely amount to having one of those kills. You need only 200 gold up on Phoenix, so there's not too much disparity there. Quas using his newfound power to just stay in the face of Seraph here. Definitely not going to let him get off the turret. We already know it's hard for Rumble to farm, so this is going to make it even harder. Good plays by Quas so far. Yeah. Uh, also, Piglet was able, despite falling early, to still farm up and get a BF Sword. A lot of times when you f get into trouble early as an AD carry, it severely delays your BF. Well, oftentimes you have to go Pickaxe or Vamp Scepter first. All right, let's see if Dominate can get any moves in here that will help the team eventually. It's just a forward ward. Could be setting up for that first dragon, however. We already have uh, Kez towards the bottom side. I think Dominate's gonna try to go the long way around here or just actually give up with that vision. He was a little late on seeing Kez. But things may not even pan out for the better here anyways. Gold's getting pretty much towards even. Just about a 500 gold lead in the favor of Team Liquid at this point. They are actually starting to put that aggression down towards the bottom side. Maybe Dragon is soon. Yeah, it will really depend on if TDK or Team Liquid can get some type of pickoff. Basically, TDK still needs to make some moves early. Uh, yes, Azir has amazing sustained damage mm -hmm. in the late game, but it's going to be very easy for Team Liquid's tanks to itemize for that. Phoenix is also going Abyssal Scepter, so you can just see the magic resist already taking shape for TL, but for now, TDK has been holding their own. Blue buff right now on Bishu, giving Phoenix a lot of trouble in the mid lane. These guys probably hoping they can split up in just a few. 
Start taking out maybe Kez as he gets into the jungle. He's done a great job at getting deep wards in. The pink wards still alive towards that red buff. Dominate's about to walk over it once again. Hopefully he sees it. And he does not. He goes right Aww. into the red. Pink ward from Kez getting its money's worth. Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing Seraph as well with the haunting guys. Trying to get big. Some of this power has to come out soon here for TDK once they get their uh, second level ultimate, I should say. Because that's what their team relies on. If they don't get as tanky as Quas in any form or factor, Kez is Cinder Hulk, but you're not going to be Ignar. It's a great dragon take there by Kez that coming in through the backside. Nice. Knowing that Bishu had the pressure in the mid lane, that's exactly when you want to go for the dragon. Well, timer's there. The red ward as well from Team Liquid, so... Things seem to just be on the back burner for them. Not worried about taking it, making sure the vision is there seems to be the priority. They feel that they have TDK towards the late game, maybe. Their team fight may be overall better against the sub squad. Yeah. We'll have to see it play out, though. We're only 15 minutes into this one. A little more action than game one. We got out of Cloud9 versus Team Solo Mid, but still measured by both teams. Yeah, this sub squad sticking in pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, Latman's going to be trying to hit his Trinity Force Power Spike, which would have been needed to fight for a Dragon if Kez couldn't have just taken it on his own, but he did. So uh, now TDK seems fairly happy with just taking this, but they're, they're heavily pressured down here in the bottom lane. Uh, Team Liquid might be looking to push a turret down the instant they go back. And yep, everyone's gone. So will that turret be if Team Liquid chooses to take it. Good knowledge that they don't get taken out in that situation. We've seen this before. Emperor's Divide once again. He also isn't on the Miasma, but it's going to be the Twin Fangs that just overall is able to do the trick. They can't believe it. So many flashes. What are they doing? <laughs> the crazy game right there. Honestly, Phoenix played that one much better. Uh, the knockback didn't take yeah. him into a turret, so he didn't have to flash away immediately. <laughs> and also, he managed to kept the, keep the poison going onto Bishu throughout to make sure his Twin Fang spam would never stop. Yeah, the second you miss that, you feel so useless. You're like, well, yeah. I can wait three more seconds to do anything, and then you're pretty much dead in that time. So with all the flashing going on, definite kudos there. Just the dive in. Latman wanting to get a little bit of melee Corky in. On to Piglet, forcing the summoner heal at just the last moment there. Very nicely done. They had the ward on and two specials, so they knew. Now to the top lane, Kez and Seraph onto Quas. He's about to gnaw out. Should be able to get a little more sustain for, I should say, tank out of this. And may be able to wallop and hop his way into a safe situation. He does have the roam up from Phoenix. Already has oh! dominated the fast flash body slam into Seraph. Completely throws him out of the mech. Rumble down, and Kez has to turn face here. We already have Phoenix cut off Bishu on the way up, so they're not able to assist in this fight. But no real damage was traded by them during that run up. So if you're like me and you're wondering where all that Gragas damage came from, <laughs> it's because I Will Dominate is doing an atypical skill order on Gragas. Most people will max their barrel in jungle. Dominate is maxing his Drunken Rage, which means his auto attack right after hitting is much more powerful like, than usual. Like a mean sheen. 140 plus 12% of the target's maximum health as bonus magic damage. So that's how he was able to blow up Sarah, flying in right there at the last second turning that fight around. And TDK definitely tunneling, tunneling a little bit there. Still have the wards that have been seeing Dominate all game, but they took a disadvantageous fight and go down for it. Dominate walked right through those wards to get back him for the kill, so we'll see if TDK can kind of slow it down, take a breather here, not get ahead of themselves because they're starting to give up a little too much and Team Liquid doesn't let go once you do that. Not yeah. too much yet from the bottom lane of Piglet and Expecial, but they really haven't been tested other than just the early part of this game. Yeah, early gank for Piglet and Expecial, making it so they couldn't dominate that lane. Right. Callista that was Annie. a good move. Callista Annie is so scary early on, so it was very smart of Kez to stay down there for mm -hmm. the gank. On top of that, though, the threat that that lane puts out was able to get them the turret, which is a decent part of their lead now. We also got to see the solo kill from Phoenix despite starting 0-2 in the game. Yep. So he's kind of regained his confidence, going to continue to pressure, even though Bishu was able to kill him that one time. And now Team Liquid really looking to make some plays around that. They're also getting pinched in quite hard. Kez right on the heads of Team Liquid as they come down. But Team Liquid feels that brute force is the way to take this fight. Fate's call goes in. Fate's call goes out. Whoa. You can see a special shot back a little bit. It goes to his attack range. 
Smokey yep. does get thrown back. Can't throw the Tibbers out immediately after that. They have to reposition, and Expecial actually goes down after the fact. And they are going to have to just force back a little bit of the fight. Good kiting there by TDK to pick one up for themselves as well. Yeah, knowing that Latman didn't have his flash, yeah. that prompted the initiation by Team Liquid, but a little bit of an overchase right there. I like that you mentioned that the Fates Call shoots the support back to their attack range, and with a pretty long attack range as well. Yeah. Got shot back quite far after going in there. Uh, probably threw Team Liquid a little bit off, Right. it looked like, but they're getting a little greedy going for this red buff. Oh, There's the Sarah. close in, Emperor's Divide pushes the team right into the rest of TDK perfectly. It is able, Phoenix is able rather to get one kill before he goes down valiantly. But that was to the hands of Latman who just came up from being dead and he wants revenge. Oh my god. A four man Nar ultimate into the wall, gets the wall up and hit onto Bishu as well for the kill. And they are able to finally burn him down. Quas having quite a game here yeah. for Team Liquid. Four people to take him down. I was like, yeah, across this. Whoa. <laughs> I suppose he'll take one with him then. It's working out perfectly for him. I mentioned the Maokai and Champion Select because it's there all the time, right? You don't have to Gnar bar out, but he has been every fight with that Gnar when he needs to. Yeah, I do have to say Kez is playing quite well, finding Kez the fight. Kez is as well, yep. Uh, especially playing with three subs there. Phoenix got a nice ultimate off to at least delay his death and it allowed them to take down a few members of TDK. You know, considering TDK had that full collapse down into their jungle, uh, the fact that Team Liquid's two solo laners took two people with them as they went down uh, makes that actually not a big win for TDK. Uh, it was an overly aggressive move for Team Liquid, but ultimately they weren't heavily punished for it. See Liquid still placing a few exit wards here knowing that TDK will be repairing what happened, as well as spending some of their cash. Bishu here picking up needlessly large rod in the mid lane to a haunting guise Abyssal Scepter. Uh, Phoenix this game for them. He's going for a lot of pen in his build. Yeah, and also just a little bit of extra survivability. Uh, one nice thing about the Cassiopeia always going tier is as soon as they get that Seraphs, uh, it's a huge amount of defensive shield he throws up in fights this time with the Haunted guys. The underrated part of that item is the extra health you get for tankiness. Rumble benefits from that greatly, and I expect yeah. Phoenix is expecting to get in close uh, this game to deal his damage. Well, it's already had to happen a few times. Whether he's bounced out or just in the middle of the fight, he's protecting the turret right now in the mid lane. He is there for the aggression. Clearing that out pretty nicely. Has a 40 CS lead just above actually onto Bishu, so he is definitely going to hit some item breakpoints coming up towards the mid game here quite quick. And Bishu's gonna probably be an item behind. 2 3 2 to 1 3 and 3, but Azir definitely controlling the fight a bit more than Acasio with the range of that ultimate. And we've seen these fights be very explosive, Jat, especially yep. once we get more core items like the Zanya's finished up. We now have the Triforce finished for Latman, which is something I was thinking about as well because once they get to these turrets, if they don't have the Azir or Latman, they're not gonna be able to take them down too quick whatsoever. Azir will help, not so much Latman. If they can get uh, some nice time near the turrets though, the Trinity Force physical damage, or Azir right. just pressing W, as long as Team Liquid's not there to harass it, will be able to be done. But you're right about the range. If it's a contested turret, it's very dangerous for them to take down. Uh, TDK has also been sticking in there quite well, but look at the magic resist that's actually been able to be built up by Team Liquid. Aegis is completed right. onto Dominate. Spectre's Cow still sitting on Quas there. Abyssal Scepter onto Phoenix. Yeah. There's less and less damage potential for TDK. The only way they really win these fights is if Latman gets going with some auto attacks and some more physical damage, or if Bishu gets a long time auto attacking with those soldiers. Look for Team Liquid to focus down Bishu in these fights. The pressure of Liquid towards the mid lane. They can't get too far. It looks like it's going to be top wave clear and just kind of panning out, getting all the resources right now. No team has anything really good on their mind that they want to get out of this. Still respecting the amount of pressure, TDK, and power they can actually put out. I feel like Team Liquid should be able to kind of get under the sub squad skin and find a way in. That's the hope. Not the way it's happening, though. Yeah, the. TDK empowered themselves with some nice early kills to keep themselves in this game, and it's, it's not the start Team Liquid would have preferred against, you know, a team that had no bans, three sub players, just Seraph yep. and Kez, who also weren't in the LCS last split. They qualified from the Challenger team, as it seemed. 
Ooh, this could be some of that free time. Most of the team is split. The teleport is there from Quas, and he's going to go. use it right above them. They can see this entry here. There's a quick lantern out. Baby throws down the box. He walked back in to put that up as a defensive wall. That's only going to be a slow coming in from Phoenix Ultimate, and I don't know if it's enough to follow. Quite a bit was used there, both sides. Yeah, pretty much all of Team Liquid's initiation there. Flash alt from X Special, Flash Ghost from Phoenix, and they do not get a single kill, but still lose their turret. Now, though, they have enough harass, they're going to get a turret of their own. All right. It's a good thing that keep, keeps lasting, at least, for Tibbers. <laughs> Able to kind of just throw them at the team, have a few more bodies for the turret to hit, and they do get the pressure. So Team Liquid able to crack the base pretty much for the first time here. Hopefully able to get some forward wards in. We've only been seeing them come from Kez, so this may be what TL needed to open up to start getting Dominate and Quas into some really advantageous positions. Looking for a pick, yeah. but it does not look like they wanted it after seeing more members. Some big item breakpoints. Phoenix completed his Seraph's Embrace. It's mm -hmm. transformed so he can use that for the shield now, if he actually gets into a team fight. Quas able to go for that frozen mallet as well. Yeah, that's a big item there for Nar. Mini Nar being able to train people down with the frozen mallet gives him enough time to transform into Mega yeah. where he really becomes dangerous. That's what happens when you get three quick kills. Hat trick right in the beginning of the game off of one teleport. It really started to catapult Quas's lane. Good thing to Seraph, he kept in that lane, 196 to 184, but Quas is still going to be a detriment to the, well, not a detriment, be a problem, I should say, for the rest of his team. One minute and 20 seconds on that dragon, and looks like with teleports down for TL, they're going to be hovering that with all their bodies. That is really what this game is going to end up coming down to here. A lot of the outer turrets down, the only outer turret still alive is Team Liquid's bottom lane turret, thanks to the shoving that Pig and X Special have been able to do. And once again, we're going to have to look to see if Bishu can stay safe on his now Death Cap Azir, which is really powering up. Wow. Because if he gets a lot of time auto attacking with those soldiers in the team fight, no matter how much magic resist you build, Azir can do so much sustained damage. If you look at his total AP ratio, yeah. every time he gets another auto attack from those soldiers, it makes it go higher and higher and higher yep. and higher. Uh, not to mention Leander's Equalizer, if it's in the right spot, just to get them started off. Definitely a thumbs up that they got to this point, at least the Kez. The shot calling, especially for three new members as well. They should be following order, but it's not always the easiest when everybody wants to get this minion, get that. Everybody has fallen in line here for what TDK has needed to do. They just need to do it a few more times. How big does the problem become when all they pretty much have is max AP items, and they're getting defended by Team Liquid. Team Liquid's already built their Aegis, their Hex Drinkers, and probably Quicksilver Sash soon for Piglet if he ever needs to get out of everything. I guess there's no hard, but... I think it's already a pretty big problem. Yeah. That's why they need an ideal team fight. So if Team Liquid gets a clean initiation that can stun multiple people, let's say from X Special, uh, Team Liquid could make right. short work. A lot of it will have to do with Dominate knocking them back. You can see here they're, they're hoping to find their window into this dragon. Maybe they force in. Let's see. There's the flash. Tibbers oh coming my. in. Hits Goodness. up. Callista Piglet stealing that with the rend as well. Damage coming in from Phoenix is huge right now. The ultimate pretty much shut down the entire team of TDK. They were just stopped by the beauty of Phoenix. And Quas is Nar ultimate. Yeah. Wow. Huzzah. Don't stand next to a wall against <laughs> Quas is Nar, but that's the path they chose to funnel in to disrupt that dragon. X Special held him there for a short time. Quas jumps in afterwards. Yep. And that's that's exactly the situation you want as Nar. Quas managing his Nar bar just right, getting the rage maxed right before that. Gives him the dragon, a bunch of kills, and the Baron Team Liquid can control the game. So big. Yeah, look at that. He's, he's already had it in the right spot. Lands his spells to get it up just right. The hook means he's gonna be hitting Mega Nar and TDK's, oh no, at this point. Four man. Nar ultimate with Bishu in the back, and Bishu couldn't get the right soldier auto attack off because he's just hitting Kwasu, the tankiest person on the team. 
That's so much crazy damage. That was the ideal up. team fight for Team Liquid. Yep, we were talking about what TDKs would need to be. No, sir. It comes up for Team Liquid. Good hook into a Tibbers, into the Casio, into the Gnar. Not much you can do about that if you're not going to move for the next five or six seconds. So now TDK know what they are up against and know <laughs> how hard it's going to be. Stay away from Quas. Yeah, to actually get back in this game. That's not the first time he's had three-man ultimate. He did it right in the beginning of the game we saw as he came down. Big things for Team Liquid. Let's see if they finally put their foot down. We did know of them to take a little bit of time. It's not that they didn't know how to end the game. It's that they play it very safe at this point and make sure they don't make any mistakes on the way in. But that also causes some problems sometime. I think they'll be all right versus the AP heavy team of TDK here, as we've been saying before. So a, another start to the split with wins for Team Liquid. Be very nice for them. That's the hope. 5,000 gold lead now with Baron. Basically, they're trying to get side wave control right now. Quas does have his teleport. So if TDK decided to initiate, he'd be able to teleport in the backside. I have to make sure to show some respect. Although, now with the death sentence down, you can see Team Liquid can just start hitting it straight away. The actual initiation from TDK is extremely limited when you compare it with Team Liquid, who can go Annie or Nar or Gragas to really go in there. It's pretty much just a nice death sentence or a flank from Rek'Sai. This, this gets difficult now. You start to spread out TDK thin. Quas probably going to need more than one person here in the top lane, as you can see. Seraph overheats even trying to clear the wave, but this means Team Liquid now won the 5v5 or easily going to win the 5v4 or 4v4 if it even happens. And they take down two turrets cross the board. Yeah, you can call Baron. This team now gets all the inner turrets because right. as far as having a slight lead, those inner turrets with Baron minions are very hard to defend. You don't have the potential to wave clear and you get trapped in that turret for so long that those flanks that Owl Dominate just came through create too big of a threat for team fights. Yeah. And at this point in the game, there's usually someone tanky enough armor-wise to take the hits from those inner turrets. Uh, therefore, Team Liquid runs a clean sweep. Now six turrets. Six turrets across. They're looking at finally knocking on the front door here of TDK's base. Team Dragon Knight's first game in the LCS. Definitely able to come out strong off the back of Kez. A good initiation to the bot lane. Really, I think you kind of nailed it, whereas Piglet and Expecial were kind of feeling, yeah, we can take these guys. And then that, that kind of mentality righted itself, and you haven't seen Team Liquid take those yeah. scary, scary chances anymore. So TDK had a good idea, but it wasn't one that could last against this team, Team Liquid. It's all right, I guess it doesn't have to. They're a sub squad. <laughs> These are kind of throwaway strats. You're always, you're always trying to. Yeah, so. Bishu had that nice solo kill at the start. Phoenix, yep. though, controlled it after that. He did. Team Liquid now. CS there. Their Baron buff is off, so at this point, they're just kind of waiting on the timers for the next Dragon, the next Baron. Obviously. Quas has had a very impressive showing on NAR. Expect many more NAR picks for him throughout the split, I would say. This is going to be finally the game where Quas almost carries from the top lane, and then they win. We had the game through. <laughs> he's on Fizz, and he's like 10, 1, and 9, and then somehow Team Liquid ends up actually losing those games. I think NAR serves a better it's purpose here. Yeah. yeah. That ended up happening a fair bit to Team Liquid in the past, where Quas would have a very good game, but the rest of the team would be incredibly struggling. Or even... Team Liquid's had these issues throughout the split where one player would have a good game and then everyone else would have a poor game. And it was very rare that Team Liquid would find the right combination of everyone having a good game. Yeah. This obviously isn't the test against <laughs> the newest team to the LCS also playing with substitutes, but it can always be some type of confidence builder, more stage experience, yeah. Piglet and Phoenix more well integrated into the team, and also Avoiding the tilt, because Phoenix gets solo killed by Bichu. Piglin X Special died at ganks early on by playing over aggressive. We've heard there's tilt in those lanes. You can see that there's <laughs> tilt, there's potential tilt from those. Piglet giving up first blood in a game against a sub squad who was not meriting any respect from their laning phase. Right. But they've been able to recover quite well. That's stuff that's the the kind of training and the learning and that education that they have gotten together being a bottom lane. And now the trust. 
that creates no silence between them. I'm sure there's a lot more communication between Team Liquid than there was last split. A lot more assurance as well in those calls. There's another Dragon going over to the team, number three. So they put four in the minds right now of TDK. A little bit of pressure starts to come from that, but if there wasn't already enough already, <laughs> Team Liquid's really getting a good way with this game. 57, well, 59,000 coming up on 40, 50K actually for TDK. So they have about an 8K lead and Team Liquid already pressured with one Baron. Use it nicely to take the outer turrets. I don't think it's gonna be much longer before they can get to the inhibitors. Yep, they're pretty much just waiting on the next Baron, which will be in a minute. At that point, methodical here by Team Liquid. I think there, maybe. Yeah, oh, go it, ahead. There's not much left for right. TDK to do because we talked about earlier on, they're kind of all in yeah. with that earlier strategy. Let's just all pick things that we're good at. If they can get ahead, they could have beaten Team Liquid yeah. to the big ticket magic resist items. But I mean, <laughs> Banshee's Veil plus another Spectre's Cow. The locket was very early on before I will dominate. The lifesteal has been pocketed by Piglet on two different items. So unless he's completely bursted out, which honestly, even though TDK has a lot of magic damage, yeah. it's all sustained magic damage. So no real burst there to take That's down right. a Bloodthirster shield. You can't really nuke someone. Team Liquid has built their items just right to counter the, the one-dimensional team comp from TDK. Looking down the board for TDK, if they've been able to put anything else in there, not even Latman with that Blade of the Rune King as well for his Corky. Now heading back towards the Baron. We will see what happens. Baby has that Elixir of Iron, so he's a big baby. Let's see if he drinks that one down for this fight. 35 minutes on the clock. TDK is being pressured into this. Quask again, almost with a perfect bar, ready to gnaw out, and he gets activated actually by that Rumble Ultimate. They are flying right through. He tries to throw everybody against the wall, and it looks like TDK is kind of able to spread this fight. But now that they leave it, oh they don't have enough HP to get where they want. That's going to be one, two, three, possibly a fourth here coming in, looking for the pet to kill for Piglet. Yeah, Piglet. He's going to find Labman. Labman hops over the wall to not give it to him, and Piglet wants it. He oh, has eyes on the prize, and he is heading down the lane. Nobody else is going to be able yeah. to cut this off, and there is just too much distance. No Penta. He couldn't go for him. That was actually a really bold move there by Team Liquid. They knew they had the Clister rent for the finish, <laughs> and you could see how ready they were for TDK when they inevitably try yeah. to go in and stop them. The instant they throw it on the Equalizer, Team Liquid peels off. Phoenix basically sacrifices himself for the greater good. They get the Baron, they win the team fight, they the Giant and our ultimate, and nearly, they nearly gave Piglet a panic. That was close. That was like Callista's dream right there. When you see all these low health targets and your Hurricane Callista, one of the best chasing and finishing <laughs> AD carries in the game, just hops to safety again it's, and again. It's very likely that'll never happen for him in that way. Yeah, I mean... It's just too perfect. Watching this fight, again, TDK contests an objective near a wall, unfortunately. Double hop in from Quas, then he flashes mm. back to make sure he gets the right angle. Stuns the majority of them. Bishu has to flash out so he can't keep his soldiers auto-attacking. Uh, pretty good wall placement there from Bishu, but then look at that. He even put the Fates call for X Special, who manned up and went in with about 100 health for the mini knockup because he knew Piglet would take him out. <laughs> and then he burned heal because he wanted to chase for the Pinta. <laughs> Couldn't quite get it though. At that point, you go all out, as hard as you want. Of course, man. Panic kills still count in the LCS. I hope they do. That's quite a bit of points. So. The bait, oh, I think he sold it. Did he eat it? Because he didn't eat it during the fight. Oh, he ate it after the fight. Oh, unfortunate. Baby's elixir was not used during the fight. I don't know if it would have helped very much. <laughs> it's not like he's dodging or rather blocking any skill shots for people. They're just doing what they can to try and get a few of these Team Liquid members to fall in their favor. TDK, I've been a rough first game here, but it is the sub squad. And it kind of yeah. where it should be getting rough, right? The beginning of the game is kind of yep. individual calls and how they work, but once the team aspect comes out, you can see where the subs start to hurt that play. Kind of an expected game from these guys. Mm -hmm. Decent laning phase because we know, that's one thing about the mechanical skill and laning phase of a lot of these players. Right. Uh, they're all very good, but you can really then get to see where teams differentiate themselves, even if they have a few kills that drop by the wayside. The way Team Liquid can then ward around the map, take objectives properly, know the right team fights, time their teleports together. All the intangibles are really what would make a pro 
team different than an amateur one. Mm -hmm. As I was saying before, when I was re-watching the C9 TSM finals, it was almost like the beginning is a rinse and repeat that the guys know so much. Watching the lane swap, we're going to take yours, this will happen, and then the game is spreads out once you get into the mid. If you didn't make a mistake during those lane swaps, we're good to go, right? It was the gentleman's yeah. agreement that we all took each other's jungle, went top and bottom. But here, TDK can't really get to that point. They haven't been in that experience enough to recall on it. So the mistakes come a little too early, and that's where Team Liquid really flourished. Now towards the bottom lane could be an equalizer right across. Yeah. But now sure, Seraph shows himself. Third inhibitor pressure. Uh, Azir could probably defend this one. No barrened up minions. Unless Team Liquid wants to get really aggressive, or they just have to wait for the two waves of super minions to push in, which will pull a defender back from TDK. And yeah, I I'm going to be interested actually just to. Uh, on a side note, as yeah. Team Liquid pushes in for the Nexus. Oh. The way level ones evolved throughout this NALCS split, because I feel like they almost got a little inbred towards the end of last year, mm -hmm. where they were just kind of accepting what should be done because that's what everyone had been doing. Right. Uh, and there should be some more exploration this year, especially after experiencing MSI. Here we go. Oh, Quas throwing back Baby into the wall. That was his ultimate, and it looks like they may have enough to clean the fight up. Phoenix tries to keep Team Liquid towards the bottom half of this inhibitor, and they're getting some good damage back from TDK. Special goes a little too close. One last hit. It. That's going to be the slow coming in from Seraph, and they are able to finalize it. And Team Liquid falters on their last inhibitor attack here with two others being down. They could have just waited for minions. Yeah, a Deathcap Void Staff is here right there. Did a bunch of damage because he was <laughs> able to stand there and get his auto attacks off you from said the soldiers. Fights go long. Yeah, despite the MR, you can see there's not a huge amount of magic resist stacking, at least for that fight, outside of Quas. So he was hitting the other guys. Kill them all. Uh, he didn't get credit, though. He only has one kill still. Let's see that again. Quas yeah. is already a little deep, and they just kind of take Baby walking yeah, so in here. They're actually doing this on a 5v5. As you said, Team Liquid could have just waited a little bit longer, and this could have easily been a 4v5. They end up sitting on an equalizer right there, and then look at the Emperor's Divide come in. It's always hard to see these Azir Sand Soldiers, but he moves three of them into the center of Team Liquid right there. Yeah. And look at those two full attacks on a X special. He's nailing these guys. Yeah, continues it on. So, one has been thwarted. It's good that Team Liquid has these other inhibitors down for their attacks because this would be the point where you kind of hold your breath and you're like, well, if that happens a few more times, guys, we're in trouble. Right now, they should still be all right with the amount of damage they have done so far to TDK's base. Have another inhibitor to work with, however, so they're just going to be waiting for these minions and possibly that one minute on Baron. Dragon number five, that wouldn't suck either. It's going to be pretty close for these guys. Definitely would not suck. Uh, very offensive build from Quas as well. Black Cleaver is his last okay. offensive item. Okay, got Quas. Three, three pseudo tank slash offensive items there in Mallet, Maw, and Cleaver. Cleaver is one of the best items you can get on Nar. Just the way he'll train you down with the Frozen Mallet, getting physical damage out with his autos and his boomerang. He can very quickly shred you yeah. out of your armor. Then he'll transform and just destroy you in Mega Knight. Great Nara build when you're ahead like Quas to have that many offensive items. I'm saying he might have near the most damage in the game on this one. Obviously with his kills, but by the end, I don't know if Phoenix is going to be able to top him. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Or even how much has Piglet been doing. It'll be an interesting Oh, that's true. Out. I don't even look at Piglet's score. Piglet could be surpassing him with that Ren damage. We'll see. 43 minutes in. Kaz quite tanky now. He did say he went for that Cinder. And now he's going to be trying to be the wall the team needs here. We're looking at level 18 Phoenix, level 17 Bishu. As Team Liquid's going to try and take this one out. Qua should be tanky enough that Piglet uses this Bloodthirster to keep himself healthy as well. I don't know if they wanted that back and forth fight. They're going to be able to go right for Piglet. He goes Rend on to Baron, so he gets it for the team no matter what. And it looks like they're going to be able to spread pretty well here. Still looking to see where he went. And Piglet is now on to Kez. Piglet's now on to Baby. Takes him down. That's actually going to be Dominate's kill. As double kill coming in for Piglet beforehand. And they are just going to keep pushing forward. The turrets, we haven't even seen that much from Bishu's Azir. Usually those are set up for a good amount of defense. But they haven't been able to stop these fights. And immediately a teleport coming in from Quas from the base. And they're going to go for the win. Yeah, again, great timing there by Quas with his Narpar. 
Oh, the big little half right at the end. 9-1 kills. Because basically, as soon as the Baron was going to go down, Quas was going to be hitting Meganar. So he's going to have it right. fight if it's contested anyway. Nice finish there. Took a little longer for Team Liquid. Took a little longer it. indeed. A bit of a falter there at the end as they got a little too excited for the first win of the split. But they do find a smile on Dominate's face there as Team Liquid takes down Team Dragon Knights for their first win. So... Cloud9 and Team Liquid, the two victors in our first two games right here. An first place. Expected victory, yeah, tied first. <laughs> we did it. Team Liquid trying to improve on their third place finish from last year. You can see TDK tried. They had a lot of magic damage in their team comp. Very little incentive for Team Liquid to itemize yeah. any armor. So once the locket was completed by I Will Dominate and the team play and team fights could start, Team Liquid did a nice job. Also, I Will Dominate. Different skill order on Gragas. I liked it in this particular game. Maxing his Drunken Rage instead of his Barrel Roll. W over Q. Surprised some people with his damage early on in the game. How's the damage looking? The damage was won by Piglet but Quas did beat Phoenix. <laughs> so the war in my head on that one is all right. It was 19, uh, about 20,000 for Nar and 16 and a half for Cassiopeia. But uh, yeah, Callista did 30K. All by himself, Piglet with the near pentakill in our second game of the NALCS summer split. But Latman, oh Latman, had to run away. Yeah. I would have too. <laughs> I'm not going to be that guy that gives Piglet a pen to kill in the second day, or Definitely the second not. game. Especially after Piglet laughs, laughs after acing you at oh, the end of the game. The BM. No way. No way the you're going to be that guy. The BM. So, uh, again, a team with a victory with definite things to look at. That early part of the game. Uh, I think those are easier fixes, though, than you know what we saw between the Cloud9 and TSM game. I think it was a little more mental. As you're saying, they didn't want to use the word, but I'm gonna. It was disrespect for them in that yeah, bottom lane. They did not respect what TDK was bringing to the table, and they paid for it a little bit. Yeah, that's exactly what happened in this game. I mean, Team Liquid, a little bit overconfident right at the start of this one, but afterwards they regained their composure. They did. And Pig that almost got a pentakill, nine kills in his first game. If we think back to last year, as far as how many games <laughs> I was it took him to get to nine <laughs> kills, that was like week four of him playing. Yeah. Uh, but he got him in the first game here, so a much better start for Pig. Boom, he doesn't have to play for the next four weeks. For more on that <laughs> game, we're going to throw it over.